So we're going to continue with um, deciphering the meaning of the name Esther. So we spoke about Esther, or Astia, refers to a star, or Astia, Esther, Asterix, a particular star. But then we highlighted that really when you look at the Asterix, it's not so much a star, like a, just a six-pointed star or a five-pointed star, but actually it is an eight-pointed star. This is what's interesting about Aster. Aster is an eight-pointed star. Now, we also link that we have in the Auda Negest, one of our Ethiopic uh, scrolls and document, mention of the eighth millennial, the eighth millennial star, or the star of the eighth millennium, called the Kokeb. We say that Kokeb most likely is an obvious link to Nibiru. If there's any fact to what we've heard, and read about Nibiru, the link is with this document called the Auda Negest, and the Auda Negest, the Ethiopian document that speaks of the eighth millennial star. Now, this is 2012, Ethiopically speaking, is 7,504, and after September 11th, it will be 7,505. Earlier, we spoke on Purim, the dice, and went into the metaphysical Bible, overstanding. So we call that part overstanding. Um, a Purim, you understand the significances of Purim. Now, this is the continuation of the portion, we could say the second part of that, and it's overstanding Esther, overstanding Esther. Now, in our story, or in our history as Ethiopian Hebrews, we have the Ethiopian queen, uh, a name as Esther as well, there's an Ethiopian queen, Esther. Before we address um the Ethiopian Esther, or the Ethiopian queen named Esther, we first have to go to the root and the base. So we're looking at the name Esther from the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. We covered some of the basics. We were touching on the fact that Esther, her name means a star. Her name means the planet Venus. And there's much in the planet Venus, because Venus has a so-called Luciferian link. But we must remember that Lux means light. And Sefer or Cipher means a bearer, like um, 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 Christopher, Ophir means the bear, the bearer of Christ. As uh, Luxifer means the bearer of light. And a lot of the other satanic, um, the, the satanic connotations have been latter-day white supremacists, whitewashed um, innovations and additions to the simplicity of the Word of God and the truthfulness of the Word of God. So we'll touch on that as well, y'all willing. But to continue here on the metaphysical of, of, of Esther, Esther, metaphysically speaking, she represents the dissolving power of spiritual love, the dissolve, how spiritual love has the power to dissolve. This is an antidote to a dictatorial will. When we're dealing with the Babylonians, the Satanists, they have a very uh, dictatorial will, and, and, the, and the powers that be, or the evil archons that rule this present end time seclura. We're speaking about the men and the people, and behind them, the demonic influences. Satan, the dragon, is very dictatorial. This is why the men and the people are likewise. But Queen Esther shows us a very important sign as we're in this 2012 time. When we look into the metaphysical meaning of her Shem, of her name. And so in overstanding Queen Esther, we learn that she represents metaphysically the dissolving power of spiritual love. Queen Esther had all of her relatives who represent the Jews or the Ihu, the Yehuda. Um, are the spiritual thoughts. So in this um, metaphysical understanding, the Jews would represent the spiritual, the Israelitish thoughts, or Israel, metaphysically, understanding the Bible metaphysically, represents the spiritual thoughts, that they join her in a fast. They join her in fasting. Now, we've touched on fasting as well, that fasting has a, a multifarious um, 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 connection it's not just fasting from food. One can fast from certain desires. One can fast from certain states of mind. One can fast from certain negative um, thoughts as well. And that is a true spiritual, that's the true spiritual um, level of fasting. In fact, we can say 
that fasting from food is like, in a sense, kindergarten. It's necessary, it's healthy, but it's a, it's, it's a basic, it's like the first grade, in other words, of fasting. As we go to the higher and spiritual schools of fasting, then we'll begin to understand the true inner meaning of the principle of fasting. And fasting in this sense with Queen Esther means that we must deny all selfish desire out of our love. We must deny all selfish desire out of Jah's love. In other words, we cannot look at Jah's love for what we want to, even though he is speaking firstly and mainly to us, the once lost but now found Beta Israel or black people. But this does not mean that we can um, superimpose our own selfish desires just because we are Israelites, just because we are Hebrews or even Ethiopian Hebrews or even elect Rastafari. Because if we do this, we go contrary to true spirituality. And this is the very, very, you know, with the hate that hate produced has to stop with the first haters. We now cannot and should not take on this intolerant, this evil nature, thinking that we're getting evil with the evildoers. Because if we get even with the evildoers, we also become like them evil, and we lose our advantage. So we must deny all selfish desires out of our love before we use it, before we use Jah's love, our love, in softening the imperious will, the dictatorial will, the, the will of the men and the people who have been powered or who are powered by evil, demonic, and satanic forces. When this consciousness, and this is the consciousness, when this consciousness of love, even of Jah's love, or the true love of God in Christ, stands in the inner court of our being, we cannot help uh, uh, ascending ascending to its demands or acceding to its demands. Unselfish love, love that is not selfish, that does not have a, a, um, a, a premeditative um, will to benefit us because we, we just want to get even with white supremacy. We cannot and should not even think such a thought because that means that we will lose our righteous our righteous advantage. Unselfish love is fearless because it is forgetful of self. It's not thinking of itself. It's not thinking selfishly of its own benefit. Will divides its dominion with love. Will. Now, we've heard a lot about will lately, especially um, when we hear about, you know, um, the the satanic agenda. We hear about ones like Alester Crowley and others who speak about um, the, the law of the lama, the law of the will, um, 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 do what thou wilt shall be all of the law. But that is contrary. That is selfish exercise of the will. That is opposite from what we learn in the Lord's Prayer, our Father's, our Father's Prayer, the Our Father Prayer, Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. You understand? You know, whether thy will be done on earth as it's done in heaven. And with that will, the will be done. And Christ even teaches us, teach us more to make our wills, you understand, obedient to good influences. Christ tells us that it should not be our own will, but seeking to do his Father's will. But in order, first of all, to do it, we must begin by learning. This is why learning is so important. You know, and this is why logic and logos is so important. So will, it divides its dominion with love when approached in the right attitude. When it's approached in the right attitude, it divides its dominion with, with love. And the right attitude is which, which is by touching the highest point of understanding. The highest point of understanding, if you read the story of Esther, that would be the top of the golden scepter. The top of the golden scepter is, is as of touching, touching the highest point of overstanding. 
You see, so when we call this series Rastafari Overstanding on Various Subject Matters, it is dealing with the fullness of it, but ascending to the highest, you know, saying to the highest, to the most high, the highest point in our overstanding, symbolic of the top of the golden scepter. In ancient times, and you find this in the Old Testament and Torah, it is, it is likened unto um, the, 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 the rod, in that sense, of the patriarch. You understand? The top of the rod of the patriarch is also symbolic of what Esther did in touching the top of the golden scepter. Understanding, which we call overstanding, understanding of the divine law. See, understanding of the divine law is understanding of Torah. And this is why we have exercised our wills in learning, in study, in dissemination, and in teaching of the teaching of His Imperial Majesty. And that begins with Torah studies, because when we speak about understanding of divine law, this is the one necessary thing in all permanent unions. So we speak about we as black folks, as lost sheep, have to unite. But the first thing is understanding or overstanding. And we must have an overstanding of our divine heritage. And along with our divine heritage are the divine laws. You understand? Or divine law. Because that is the one necessary thing. That's the one thing that is asphalagino. Asphalagi. That means the, the thing that must be sought. The thing that is necessary in all permanent unions. When we know the truth, we all are one. When we know the truth. So because we have been, have been lied to, we've been, we've been told lies about who we are, we've been lied to about history, we've been lied to about ourselves, and then we perpetrate in that state of deception and delusion, we perpetrate these lies. It is necessary to reverse the curse by learning the truth. So when we know the truth, this now becomes the key to our unity, is knowledge of the truth. And there is no separation whatsoever. Once we know the truth, there is no separation. But as long as we only know half truths, and half the story has been suppressed, and those who speak that truth have been downpressed or oppressed. This is what allows Satan and the evil forces to continually divide and conquer us, and we live in this, in this once beautiful world, but this world that, that has turned into hell. You understand? This world that we look at it now and we see creation is it, 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 screaming, it's crying out. You understand? For the sons of God. For the very sons of God. Now, on that particular note, I know this is beginning to touch on some of the ecological issues. But Rastafari, the Rastafari were some of the first to really speak concerning real ecological issues, to speak concerning the whole holistic, you understand, the whole natural agenda. You always, and now this has become... A, a big product and merchandise in Babylon because now many people have accepted the, the, the truth concerning nature and how humanity has, has destroyed nature, but more correctly, how white supremacy has initiated this destruction of nature, this misuse of nature, and how we as the oppressed and those who live in this this world, not of it, but in it, have followed along willy-nilly in its destruction. And to sum up on this particular issue right here, we want to sum up with one particular area of Scripture that hopefully, hopefully you will be able to understand the link. Now, when we go to Romans, and it's interesting that this is found actually in the book of Romans, of all places. It's found in the epistle, uh, in epistle of our of our brother Hawadia Aulos. Okay, now what does it say right here? Chapter 8 is a very important chapter. The whole scripture, of course, is important, but in this particular discussion, 
because remember in the metaphysical understanding of Esther, it it it, it made a, a very important um link that we want to follow up on and the key verse the key verse um verses really are concerning the creation is to be delivered from suffering. The creation and we as the creatures and sons of God are living in the death throes of the old world and we're on the cusp of a new world. That's essentially what 2012 really is symbolic of from a scriptural, a biblical perspective. So chapter 8 of Romans from verse 18, it speaks that the creation delivered from suffering and death is kept for or is reserved. The only thing that's keeping this creation and even humanity alive is the will of God for the coming sons of God, for the children of God. Verse 18, Paul says, he writes, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature, the earnest expectation of of the creature, and we're speaking of man, we're speaking of the animals, we're speaking of all creatures, waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. It waits for the Bani Ha Elohim. And the firstborn of the Bani Ha Elohim is our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua Ha Moshiach. He is the Bain Ha Elohim. For the creature was made subject to vanity, all the vanities that we see every day, you understand, concerning the animals and the creatures, you understand, the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly. The creature, you know, those of you who are dead as eaters or meat eaters, the creature did not volunteer, the chicken, you know, and, 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 and the, the goat and the, and the cattle, and even to the extent the fish have not voluntarily volunteered their lives so that you can have a so-called, quote, good meal. That's what you believe because the whole world has been deceived. And that's a part of the destruction of the creature and the creation. So the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope, the same in an expectation of better things to come. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption, so the creature and creation is presently in the bondage. The whole creation is in a state of bondage, and the bondage is called the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So the children of God and the lost sheep represent the, the, the seed. We're speaking of the black sheep of the Beta Israel. That's the seed of the sons or the children of God. And they too have been in a 400 plus year bond edge at the end of this bond age, this age of bondage, this age of corruption, this age of the Gentile and white supremacy. You understand whose false ideas, false racist and racial ideas have polluted all creation and its iniquity has reached up to the heavens, even the highest heavens. This is one of the reasons why they're so afraid of so called extraterrestrial encounters. You understand? Is because they know innately their sin and their error. And they know that there must be a judgment by looking at all of creation and, and the wonderful. Um, design, as some call it, in creation, the intelligence, the divine intelligence, they know that their evil cannot escape judgment, but they are unwilling to change their ways. They're unwilling to even acknowledge that fact. And they hide behind the misinterpretation of our scriptures, of the Holy Bible. You know, and this is why in the last days it says that the glorious gospel Yes, in the gospel, the good news must be preached to all creatures 
Therefore, we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. That's a beautiful verse, very accurate, verse 22. Think about this for a moment. Think about this verse for a moment. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain, in pain together until now. I see in my mind's eye that commercial, I don't know if it's a PETA or animal commercial where the animal is saying, like, why me, you know, how long will this go on? You can just look at all of the pollution. And all the pollution that we see is for false, materialistic, vain reasons. They have killed off species of animals, cut down forests, you know what I'm saying, caused the earth to be in this present corruption, all for false materialistic values and use a false cloak of counterfeit Christianity to cover up that li those lies, you understand, know and have deceived the lost sheep of the Beta Israel until black folks think that they're Gentiles instead of being Beta Israel, instead of being the children of Israel and therefore also of the children of God. So when we read this verse here, for we know that the whole creation grown up and travail of and pain together until now. That's a, that's a beautiful verse. I mean, I'm thinking about this, and hopefully maybe some of you all out there will, will, will get up on this idea. Take this verse. Have, have a reader, maybe a, a, a female voice, read over this particular verse, Romans 8 and, 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 and 22, and then just show various pictures of the pollution and destruction and how the animals, how the creation, and, and even men and people are groaning and travailing in pain from day to day, you understand, in pain all over the world. And even here in America, you understand, the hypocrites run around the world, and yet people are suffering right here in America. Verse 23, and not only they, but ourselves also. So it's not only the, the animals and the creatures, but it's also ourselves. You see, most folks don't make that connection. They don't see the suffering of the animal creation being any way linked with their own suffering because they have been so deceived, hoodwinked, and bamboozled that think that because they got some paper currency, some cash money, that they're not suffering because they don't see the big picture. They don't see the judgment, both in this world and in the world to come, that is coming, and nothing that they do, nothing that they say, you know what I'm saying, can change it. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. So that may be one of the reasons why some don't get this. They don't have the first fruits of the Spirit of God in Christ. They don't have these first fruits. But those of us who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves. Brothers and sisters, I can't tell you when I'm watching some of these programs, these videos of the documentary showing uh, the, the destruction of the creatures, you know, what's happening with the rainforest, what's happening with and, and the, the killing, going back to Africa and killing the animals, and it's like white folks in a sense, and some of them with good intentions, but still it's them who have to come back in and show the Africans that, listen, you shouldn't be killing off these animals, afraid of these, they're part of your, your ecology. The Africans in false religion and in white supremacy have forgotten their real role as caretakers for creation. So when we're seeing these pictures and seeing what's going on, it often comes to my mind, this particular area of Scripture. I wanted to say something, though it might be a little bit out of context for some, but really I think that it has, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a summary of what we're saying right here, when we understand the real, the overstanding of Purim, Purim dealing with this um, um, but false belief, false fears, and superstition, you understand? And I think that goes to, to the, 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 the saying, People say, well, what can we do about it? There's so much evil and stuff going on. Some people have totally given up. Really, they have given in to the satanic and the agenda of the evildoers. They have given in to hell, death, and destruction. But I and I, I and I, no retreat, no surrender. You know what I'm saying? It's the king of kings and his Christ. That is who's the victor. And I and I will overcome as it's written, I and I have already overcome. But we have to now learn of this. We have to put in 
the we have to work out our salvation. And this too is a part of that working out. This is also part of the works of Josh's children. You understand? Josh's children have to seize, you understand, the spearhead, you understand, on this real agenda, you understand, about ecological issues, you understand, about the environment. But in the love of God, that means also in the logic of God, and Romans chapter 8, verses um, 18, verses 18, particularly 18 to, um, 18 to 25, speaks to this. Other areas of scripture also, but here I think is a perfect speaking to this, this, this present um, ecological disaster, disaster that, that we and humanity are facing. And, and the creatures, when we see the animals like the bears, the other day there was a, a black bear um, stories about the black bear here in America, what, what some of these, 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 these confused white folks, I don't know, it's, it's like they just crawled out of a cave somewhere and don't understand that the animals had their environment. But instead, they would choose to move and live into the area that the animals have been living in. They have other places to live, but they see these places, and they covet to live where the animals have been living for, for, for decades, uh, centuries, who knows. And they move in there, and then they deny the animals their natural habitat, their food sources. And then, like the animal like the black bear... And I think that they kill the black bear, especially the way they do, because they call it black, because there's something in their, in their programming that, that adds to that, that false satanic mind, that adverse consciousness. And then the bears are looking for food, and, and some of the other animals are looking for food, and happen to come into their area, they call the police, and they just execute all these animals. They just kill all these animals. And if you watch the interviews of these killers, these are the same killers that would kill, if possible, you and me and my children and our children. You know what I'm saying? There's something very wrong about that. And how long shall, as Bob Marley said in Redemption Song, how long shall we sit aside? You know, how long shall we sit aside and just look and say, well, we just got to fulfill it, you know, because it's a part of the book. We got to, got to fulfill. Well, yes. It is part of the book. But if you know it's a part of the book and you don't fulfill your part or aspect of fulfilling the will of God in Christ, then you're damned. You know what I'm saying? You're damned. You're effed. You, you too, you understand, are going to end up with Satan and his angels because you was not a messenger of God's will, but you had bent, bowed over to Antichrist and did not fulfill the will of Christ, even while knowing that it's in the book. But what is written in the book concerning you and I? What work are we to do you know, as sons of God, as children of God? That's the challenge right now, and there's, and there's not much time. You see, there's not much time before, as they say, all hell breaks out, and, and know it for sure. You understand? Know it for sure. This evil way of living cannot go on indefinitely. A word to the wise should be sufficient. So, this area of Scripture says, and not only they, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to it, the redemption of the body. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not a world in which dwelleth righteousness, then we, then do we with patience, then do we with patience wait for it. Now, 
this area in scripture often has been spiritualized. You know, in counterfeit and placebo Christianity. But basically, it speaks to what the true children of God, you understand, and, and the brothers and sisters of, of Christ, we can say, are supposed to be about, especially in a time like this. In other words, ecological issues are also a part of the big picture. You understand? And we as Rastafari, once again, must be about the teaching of his majesty because we are some of the first to even point out this this link in modern times, the harmony about nature and so-called being natural and preserving the nature life and, and, and stop and stop um slaying the animals to fulfill selfish and and, and, and lower instinctual desires that some people think are rooted in our very identity. They think, they think killing the animals somehow does not have for food even, because there's many other food sources. True, and sometimes, anciently, these were some of the few, few sources of proteins or whatever like that. But even those things, those days are gone are those days. You understand? Gone are those days. That's, that's, that's not just old-fashioned. You understand? That's wrong. So this is a little message on that. We wanted to put this perhaps in another, in another um, category, but um, so it is. Here it is. And um, the lesson from Esther is very important because it deals with Jah's love. It deals with aligning our wills to God and Christ, and it really teaches us, you understand, how to overcome this false sense of, 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 of fate and superstition, that there's nothing we can do. We, we are just uh, passive observers of the destruction, you understand, of creation. But if creation is destroyed, then know this. Our lives and the lives of our children, the lives of even humanity are at stake. So there's a lot that's at stake to just sit passively by and say, what can we do about it? Or we just have to, you know, watch our prophets die. We just got to fulfill the book. You understand? Yes, the book will be fulfilled, but what role do we play in it? Are we for truth or against truth? And being in a frozen psychological state saying, what can we do about it? Basically, is to say that we are against the truth because if we're not for Christ, for our black Lord and Savior, that means that we are against him. So we got to think about these things pray on these things. Brothers and sisters, link with us, www.lojsociety.org. Um, the contact, contact information, um, send us a contact if, if there's something going on or something that one would like to fellowship or to, or to, or to work on together. You understand some, some project or some program or, or just, just share with us some of your ideas. Um, we're on the web, www.lojsociety.org, and we're trying to get some sort of a group online um, where we can be more in direct in contact. Um, you could check out our Twitter account as well, and um, you, you could follow us or follow some of our postings there as well. Um, we're going to try to work on that, you know, for limited resources, but use these means to basically um, touch base with our people. Brothers and sisters, there's more to come. Yah willing, stay stay in tune, watch and pray, and shalom, Rastafari.